Hi, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services. And today we're gonna learn about ground truth on Amazon SageMaker. This is your deep dive. There are tons of ideas out there, right? And those ideas are awesome. And we wanna build those ideas. We wanna build models that can do everything under the sun. But in reality, we need labeled data in order to get that done, right? And we don't just need a small amount of labeled data. We need a lot. And so in theory, right, having a lot of high quality data uh, could actually be the differentiator in terms of helping us build high quality models. And so in order to support high quality models around the world, uh, we have Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth. And so Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth is a managed data labeling solution that can help you save money uh, by reducing labeling costs by up to 70%. And so there are three ways that you can use data labeling on Ground Truth. The first one is with mechanical torque workers. And so that is for non-sensitive data, right? You can use non-sensitive data to actually crowdsource um, the labeling for your data objects. Uh, that, that's with Mechanical Turk. Uh, you can also set up a labeling solution using uh, SMEs from your own company. Um, so you can set up a private labeling workforce using employees, again, from your own company or your own choosing. And you can also go with third-party vendors. Okay, so there are five built-in data labeling tasks on SageMaker Ground Truth. First one is bounding boxes, right? So you can draw bounding boxes when you need to identify something within an image. Um, there's also image classification. So you can take an image and just literally classify it for what you need to be able to identify. Uh, semantic segmentation. So for drawing pixel maps around everything that's actually in your picture. Uh, performing text classification. So when you've got some text and you wanna just drop it in a bucket. Uh, and then recently named entity record so you can actually identify uh, entities within your text files. Uh, there are also many custom templates that are out there, right? So for, for text and for audio files, um, you can bring your own HTML um, or you can use a custom template that we have uh, in order to get started. So some common use cases, right? Autonomous star, right? Pretty much every self-driving solution is going to need to have an incredibly large amount of very high quality training data. Um, many vision scenarios are gonna leverage uh, data labeling solutions. Uh, root cause analysis is, is fairly common, right? So if you uh, have a model that is telling you how healthy a machine is, um, if you're in say airlines or if you're um, you know, managing uh, manufacturing engines and machinery, um, it's common to have a model tell you um, how likely a machine is to fail, um, but then you need to actually Actually classify it. You need to have an operational engineer um, come on site and then tell you what's actually going on. So root cause analysis is a very common way of leveraging uh, SageMaker Ground Truth. So the way this works, uh, right, you'll load up your data into S3. Uh, that's going to kick off a job with human annotators. So you have actual people who are providing the labels for those images. Uh, you can optionally enable active learning. Uh, and so if you do, that's actually going to use a machine learning model to label your data, uh, right? And if you're skeptical about that, as I once was, um, your, your, your concerns will be assuaged when you realize that it's, it's significantly cheaper. Uh, you can save up to 70% of your costs uh, by utilizing active learning. So that, that's a very popular solution. Um, and so essentially with the active learning, uh, you, there's gonna be a model, right, that's trained on your data. And when the predictions from that model are on the upside of 80% confident, that is automatically considered training data, right? That's considered a label. If it's below 80% confident, then it's shot over to the actual humans who will then perform the annotation for you. So it's cheaper and it's an accelerator, right? You can move faster. And so if you want an accurate label, right, if you want your images to be accurately labeled, uh, you can actually increase the number of labelers per object. Um, so if you have a picture, right, and if there's some uh, disagreement about what the content of that picture should be, uh, just up the number of people who are labeling that object and then it'll be more accurate. Uh, but in the event that you have disagreement, right, so if you've got four people and they're looking at this picture of a dog, right? And then three people say that, hey, that's a bulldog, but one person says it's a Sharpe. If you're just doing, you know, basic 
uh, basic analysis here, you'll think, well, you know, three out of four, it's probably a bulldog. Uh, but in reality, um, you should actually be able to look at the probabilities, right? So chain the probabilities that each person has been correct in the past. And then that's a nice way that you can annotate those results. And so all that annotation consolidation is available on Amazon SageMaker in the Ground Truth Labeler. Uh, we're using this ability to model how accurate a person has been in order to more correctly incorporate their specific labels. And so moving on ahead here, uh, so you can select a sample from your data set. Right, so once you've referenced a data set in S3 to perform the labeling on, you don't have to pull, pull the entire data set uh, into that labeling job. You can, uh, but you can also select a random sample or you can filter a subset. Uh, you can specify your price point. So you can actually determine how much you want to spend for that uh, given some criteria. And that's based on the complexity of the task and how long in seconds a person is, is relatively uh, going to be looking at that. And then automatic labeling, super easy, right? You just click a button and then that'll enable the automatic labeler. And so here is, here's an example of what this is actually gonna look like, right? So the labeling tool is actually setting up a UI, right? So this is a UI of images that are coming in and then your labelers are gonna be able to detect that image. They can either classify it uh, or in this case, they can draw a bounding box around it and then submit it. And so once this process is done, um, you can then train a model from that ground truth output. Um, so in the first case, when we were looking at that picture of a penguin, um, we were putting an object detection box around that penguin so we could actually identify the penguin. Uh, the output from that is gonna be put into an augmented manifest file that's gonna point to our image and then the actual pixel locations for the bounding box, right? So the actual corners around that bird, and that's gonna live in an augmented manifest file. And so that manifest file, right, is in S3. Uh, and then we're gonna use that as the input to a downstream training job. And so that SageMaker training job is gonna be able to pull from the manifest file and then automatically train a model from that. And so with that, let's check it out. So over here, uh, for this scenario, we're actually gonna stick within the console. Um, so these are labeling jobs that we have, right? Probably very familiar with notebooks, training jobs and inferencing, but let's check out these ground truth labeling jobs. So I have a number of training jobs that I have previously ran. Uh, one of the things I really like about the ground truth labeling um, is all the content that you get in the console, right? So this is a job that ran previously and these are some of the objects um, that were actually identified by the model, right? So these are birds, uh, and each of these birds has a bounding box around it, and that's because that's what SageMaker uh, was able to detect, again, using, um, using the labelers. But let's see if we can set up a new one. So I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna cruise up here, select Actions, and then Clone. And so that's using all the details from a previous job, and then it's gonna help us set up a new one. All right, uh, so job name here, right? That's gonna use our previous one and then clone. Uh, this attribute name is something you wanna think about. So the attribute name is what is actually gonna show up in your augmented manifest file. So you wanna set this to your class name. So here I'm gonna say is bird, right? Because what I'm trying to detect is whether or not that picture is actually a bird. Uh, we've got our input data set location. Uh, and what's also really nice about Ground Truth is that it'll actually create a manifest file for us. Um, so we just have to point to a folder in S3 with all of our images or our text files, and then SageMaker will create that manifest file for us. Again, so really nice. Okay, then we've got our output data set location, and then we've got our IAM role specifications. I'm just gonna use an existing one here. And this is where we can specify how much data we want to pull in, right? Are we looking for the full data set? Are we trying to collect a random sample? Do we want to filter? Do we want to encrypt? All the good stuff. Okay, uh, down here, we can specify our task. Uh, so these are the three built-in tasks for uh, images. But then let's check this out. We can select text. Here we go. So that's text classification named entity recognition. Or we can go with custom. We'll stick with image, right? We'll leave this as bounding box. Let's keep cruising here. Okay, 
Uh, so these are the three types of workers um, that we can ask for help on this project, right? So we have public workers. Uh, and so again, those are independent contractors who can jump in and, and label our data. Uh, we can go with a private workforce, again, using, um, using this private team, or, or we can go with vendors um, that we're gonna, we're gonna leverage here. I'll stick with the, the public workers for now. And here's where we set our price point. Right, this is the, the price point that we're gonna specify. Um, so again, that's a, roughly how long, uh, in this case in seconds, we expect a person um, to, to require to actually get this labeled. There we go. Um, so that, that's your one-click enabler, uh, right, for the, for the automatic labeling. Uh, and this is where we can increase or decrease the number of workers, right? So if we're really struggling to get accurate results, we should just increase this. Uh, and then here's where we set up our tool. Uh, so this is where we can set up the, the bounding box labeler. Check this out, let's preview. And the preview is gonna take us over here. Right, and so these are some examples of what we're gonna get. These are the labels, right? And label is gonna be is bird here, we can, we can specify that. And then let's select a box. And then we're gonna draw the box around the bird. Here we go, then we'll hit submit. And so when we hit submit, again, this is what is captured in that manifest file. So it's the actual pixels for where um, the box literally is. There we go, so then we would hit submit. And so when we hit submit, um, again, the, the process is just gonna keep running and then people will go in and we'll actually label our data uh, and hopefully uh, we get all of our data labeled, right? We'll, we'll get it all back. Um, and then the output is gonna be a manifest file. So let's check that out. So that link is gonna shoot us over here, right? So this is, this is that S3 bucket. Let's see, so we've got manifests, output, output.manifest, that sounds promising. Let's download this. All right. And so here is that output file. And so again, that is the manifest file um, for the images. Looks like this, uh, yeah, this one is the input. Uh, and so this is the input manifest file that's going in and the output should have the actual label for us. So thanks, let's cruise back. Okay, some pro tips for using ground truth. Um, first off, you can pull multiple objects in batch. Uh, you don't have to pull each object one by one. That is definitely for using a custom workflow. Uh, so when you're bringing your own HTML frame, you can query uh, multiple objects in S3 at a single point in time. Um, that's gonna be less helpful for, say, object detection. Um, but if you're doing image classification, um, then you can have your labelers look at multiple images at a single time and then just select whatever is not in the class. And that way they can work, they can be much more productive. Uh, again, that manifest file can take a little bit of time to get used to, uh, but once you have some experience with developing manifest files, it feels a lot better. Um, a common integration technique is using a queue. Um, so setting up a queue to collect data that you need labeled and then essentially once that's reached a point, shooting that off and actually starting a ground truth labeling job. Um, the last thing you wanna think about is that uh, ground truth is an excellent way to keep humans in the loop, right? So it's a way that you can actually interact with other teams um, throughout your company or throughout you know, your community um, who can provide labels for you, which you can then put into machine learning models. And so with that, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our video on ground truth data labeling. My name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services, and I hope you have a great day.